What is a quasi crystal? Shepman wrote, a metallic face with long range order and no translational symmetry. I will show you he was mistaken. Seneca wrote, it's a crystal with forbidden symmetry. What's that? Forbidden with crystallographic restriction. But who ever heard of a crystal that diffracts in geometric order 0, 1, tor, tor, square, tor, cube, which is irrational, aperiodic, and anharmonic? It's not a crystal. There's no restriction. The hierarchic icosahedra has only one problem, and that is, how does it diffract with a sharp pattern, and I'm able to show you. Manganese is at the centre, this is the unit cell. And the cell is edge sharing. So the stoichiometry is aluminium 6 manganese. And the cluster is made up of icosahedral unit cells. Notice that the edge width of the unit cell stretches to tor squared in the icosahedral cluster and to tor to the power 4 in the supercluster. Here's manganese. What you see here is four tiers of the icosahedral structure. One, two, three, four, and it's infinitely extensible. With better electropolishing, we could uh, see further hierarchies in this image. Hierarchic icosahedra diffract differently from crystals. In crystals, n the order is integral. In the icosahedra, as we've seen, they are uh, geometric and irrational. And the d's are multiple. So the diffraction in quasi-crystals is completely different from crystals. And the n and d falsify Bragg diffraction in quasi-crystals. Before we discuss diffraction, we must get the uh, indexation correct. This diagram shows the principal axes and principal diffraction planes in the icosahedral structure. They're mutually normal. And they are all three-dimensional, geometric, simple, and complete. Dimensions should not be multiplied without necessity. Mathematicians are dreamers. But we can't use Bragg diffraction but we can use the structure factor method. In structure factors, in crystals, the locations of individual atoms in the unit cell are projected onto a selected plane normal, and the phases added to produce an amplitude for a selected Bragg beam. In quasi-crystals, we make two adjustments. Firstly, because we have multiple despacings, we include a coherence factor. We will derive this precisely as we go along. And it will show us why diffraction is necessary. Secondly, because our unit cells are not periodically repeating, our amplitude has to be calculated iteratively. Amplitude order P is equal to amplitude order P minus 1 times this function of the stretching factor phase. And what is the outcome? The outcome is there is no Bragg diffraction. If there were Bragg diffraction, it would occur on the axis where Cs equals 1. But instead, when we scan Cs, we find that the diffraction occurs at the hierarchic diffraction condition, where the metric displaces the diffraction from the Bragg condition by over 10%. This quasi-Bragg condition is the same for all the beams in the original data. So what is the metric? First, let's think about the diffraction. The golden triad applies to the unit cell, the cluster, the supercluster, and higher orders with scaling. And in each dimension, they have three principal planes, shown in red. And the spacings between these principal planes 
gives us one tor, tor squared, tor cubed, tor to the fourth, tor to the fifth, etc. And the subclusters are locate on these corners. Hierarchic diffraction occurs by in-phase scattering from subcluster centers. That's a broad view of the diffraction. To analyze it, we need to understand those geometric uh, indices. Geometric tor to the m can be written as the Fibonacci sequence 1 tor, 1 plus tor, 1 plus 2 tor, 2 plus 3 tor, etc. And it can also be written as the sum of two Fibonacci sequences, one of them natural and one of them irrational. We can further naturalize this part and find the metric function. The metric function consists in the irrational index subtracting the natural part to leave the irrational part normalized by another natural number, which I shall illustrate in a moment. And the metric function is the inverse of the metric that we have discovered in the structure factors. Let's see how that pans out. It pans out in the quasi-block wave. What is the quasi-block wave? It's the lattice image in the two-beam condition. Look first at the blue pseudo Bragg block wave. It's commensurate at the unit cell, but not at higher orders. And so it's not observed, it doesn't diffract. But when we stretch the pseudo Bragg block wave by the metric function, we get the quasi block wave. And this is commensurate at all geometric intercepts. It's commensurate not only long range, but also short range. So is there long range order? Yes, of course. That's evident in the diffraction. And is there no translational symmetry? On the contrary, hierarchic block waves are invariant under all translations, a tor to the m. The translational symmetry is hierarchic. One word about that denominator. Count the number of cycles between intercepts. 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. That's the Fibonacci sequence that we saw in the denominator. So we have translational symmetry. Welcome, hierarchic icosahedra, to a new world in physics. <laughs>